We also want to share with you guys some opportunities that we have that are trending big time and it's even trending uh, unnatural colors, I guess we could call them. But we want to show you guys how to do them where it looks natural, where you don't notice someone with purple hair necessarily, but you can add these tones to their hair and make it really beautiful. So we're going to work with Jamie. So we pre light in Jamie. What's up, Jamie? Oh, what's up? Yo. Uh, Jen's going to help me out. So again, we just came in and Jen, you teased, right? Yes. Yeah, we just teased highlighted. Um, just to get a little brightness and lightness in through here. And what a TZ highlight is, um, you guys come in. I'm not going to do it fully, but you basically tease if you haven't done it before. You remove the weight from the ends. You push it up, right? As you're pushing that up, you're removing some of that weight. And then we put our lightener on. So it keeps a beautiful, soft, lived-in kind of a color. You guys can see we're very raw with our tone. And we're going to work with a combination of our natural blondes that we can kind of work with and tone down. And then we have some brighter colors from our Pop XG line as well. For me, a lot of these colors, it's great to you know, make someone's whole head bright pink. I think it looks awesome. I'm all for it. But what I like to do is try to take a combination of natural colors and put some of these colors in really fun places. So you can notice the person overall and her hair second. I grew up as a skateboarder. You know, I was never a very good one, but I tried. <laughs> but the thing that was always cool about skating is everybody was doing the same tricks, but they would do them with their own style or their own flair. And one of the things I felt like as a colorist, for me personally, is I wanted to be able to develop my own style as a colorist. If you're just joining us, we're with Colin Caruso, Artistic Director, Paul Mitchell Hair Color, and we're on our second model, and he's going to be working with Paul Mitchell Color Create just to do some sort of um, gateway uh, color for people who, who maybe want to experiment with creative color but you know don't want a full head, don't need to go full on unicorn. Um, but you're just going to get some pops of color onto his previously uh, highlighted model. So we're working with Jen too, Jen Montoya. Um, she's one of the best educators we have at John Paul Mitchell System. She's also the color content manager. Manager on uh, all these different titles. <laughs> um, so here's how it's going to work. So one of the things that I like to do is again picture the end result done. You know, a lot of times that we're working, we sometimes forget how it's gonna look when it's finished. So we're working with two different products and Valerie, who's gonna be with us in a little bit, and she's our actual Paul Mitchell color chemist. Um, she's an actual scientist, which I think is awesome. Mm. Not a hairdresser pretending to be one. We have this whole kind of segment that we do called Ask Val. You know, pretty much every meeting we have Valerie on, we're like, Ask Val, we got questions. We can get those actual scientific answers, which is great. She's gonna mix us up on one of my favorite products, which is Flash Finish. It's an icy blue fa uh, flash finish. It works quick, which I love, and it's gonna take out some of this um, yellow tones that are kind of popping through. So the key is to leave some of the blonde that you have and mix it with these brighter colors. And if you guys go to my um, Instagram page, it's at Colin Caruso, C-O-L-I-N-C-A-R-U-S-O. You can see some examples of this already done where we kind of take that blonde and marry it with these brighter colors. Again, this is another really great opportunity to work with color craft. A lot of these colors, you know, with the pastels and the temporary colors, they fade out relatively quickly. So again, what used to be a, a, a redo for me in my salon when I was doing these kinds of tones with the addition of color craft now becomes a retail opportunity. So I'm able to sell them the color, especially with those rose golds and things like that. So that is a really great opportunity to, you know, as it does fade, you can customize that color conditioner for them and then they can go back in in their shower and reapply certain colors in through here. Like here, I would just mix her a golden yellow color craft, which we can show you. So she could run that over and as it starts to fade, it'll give life to her hair back in through here. So one of the biggest reasons why these kind of colors fade is because we overlift. So when you overlift, you're going to get intensity, but without that underlining color, it's going to wash out relatively quickly. So know what level you're going to lift to. Example, like I can give you, you know, um, if you guys think about red, even in a traditional sense, if I'm taking red hair color, right, I can make an orange red or I can make a red red, both at a level six. If it's an orange, a six OR, it's going to appear brighter than a six R. So even though it's the same level, you know, I got to kind of look at if I overlift, if I lift to an eight and then put that same color over top, it might be a little bit brighter, but it's going to wash out a little bit quicker. So knowing why you're doing what you're doing is a huge skill set as a colorist. You want to make sure you're not overlifting in those situations. So, but this is really not about the sectioning. I can't stress that enough either. It's more about just the eye. 
you know? So if I'm gonna take, for example, this is our Pop XG Blue, and we mixed it with a little bit of conditioner just to dilute it. It's an old trick we do at hair shows because I don't want this to be screaming intensity. I want it to be soft and I want it to be a little bit more muted. And I love these kind of muted pastels. I think, you know, whether they're trending or not, you know, for me, that's the type of colorist that I am and that's the type of colorist I wanna be. So I love how these colors are a little bit muted and softer. But what's cool is I'm gonna make sure whatever I paint here matches into what I'm painting in through here. So if you guys notice, I went blue in through here. So now I can definitely work with my pink. If I put my pink here over the green, it's gonna be muddy, it's gonna be flat. It's not the color that I want. So knowing what you're painting into what makes a huge difference. And now as you guys can see, I got my pink and now I'm gonna slightly overlap into here and now I got a third color. So now I'm meshing it in and creating just a little bit more tone in through here, but those colors work together. And I think that's really key as you guys are kind of working with your rainbow tones and your colors. You know, I watch people sometimes take yellow and run it into violet. I'm like, dude, just <laughs> make brown, man. You know, like that's not gonna work. So you wanna be creative, but you wanna be creative with purpose as Robert Crowings always used to say. Jamie's okay. awesome. She loves her hair. You know, she's always expressing herself through her hair. She's the perfect client for this. And she said she wants some yellow. So I'm going to go Great. yellow heavy here for her. Yeah, yellow is fun. Great. Jamie was significantly darker this morning, you know, so we kind of had to give her a little bit of lift. Here's another really cool thing. And this works great with color craft too. Um, you know, I have a lot of clients that have lived in balayages and they want to try different colors. And we don't even, we don't even balayage them. In between services, we'll just mix up a different color craft and then we'll just run that over top. So they can take their previously existing lived in blonde and make it a totally new color just with the addition of color craft conditioner. So same thing with toning, you guys can do all those kind of things. So I mean, to me, one of the key er things you wanna do is keep the hair healthy, which I think is really important. And I do believe in, you know, we are in the relationship business. So I have a lot of clients that love, 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 love when they come in and they book a service and I'm telling them, you don't need a balayage today. We can just single process you and change your end color. Yeah. They love that type of relationship. And for me, like I gotta keep that fabric safe and in condition. Without a good fabric, it doesn't matter, you know, what color, what the color look like. It's not gonna look great. So this is our flash finish. These are great. These process in about five minutes. Um, and they will neutralize the color really perfectly. So these are perfect to use back at the shampoo bowl if you're looking for that really quick toner. I don't know about you guys, but I got clients all the time that are, for some reason, anti-toner. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be toned all the time, you know. So this is perfect. Five minutes, you can get that toner on, and it's beautiful. So, again, this is going to give me a nice, cool blonde. And I'm also over okay with this staying on longer than the five minutes and slightly over-depositing for a little extra smoke in the hair, which I think Jamie's cool with too. I just like to work with the tones that Jamie was into. Jamie said she was into the yellows. So for me, like I'll start with that. So she's like, I really wanna be yellow. I want those kind of, so then I'm starting to think, all right, what colors complement that yellow base? What colors can I work together? And you can see these starting to come in into play here. You know, they're all built off of that one color that she likes. So as you start to see these tones popping through, right? They're beautiful, they're visual, but they work together. So it starts with what color she wants to see and then you add your artistic flair. You don't always get to do this. Not every client is as cool as Jamie. Believe me, you know, um, I'm not doing a ton of this kind of work every single day. But what's cool about it is that when you post it and through your Instagram and through being able to brand yourself on your own channel, post work like this, you're gonna draw clients that are interested in receiving work like this. So gotta do hair for you. I always say that. Post work that you wanna do and do hair for free like you used to. I mean, when I started out, I did hair for free every day. You know, I would be begging people like, I'll buy this stuff, come in my basement, let me color your hair, you know? I was 12 years old, I didn't know, you know? So what I say is like, once it becomes a job for you, go back to basics and, and start to be creative again. Push the envelope, make mistakes. It's hard to do with a busy clientele, you know? So take a Monday off like you're doing now and go back in and, and now if you see something that you love, see something that you want to do, go back and set something up where you can do hair for you. That's what it's all about. Hi, I'm Valerie George. I'm Vice President of Research and Development at Paul Mitchell and I'm also the chemist for all of the color. So bleaches, the Demi, Pop XG, I work on it all. What Colin um, and Jen are working with right now, uh, talk about it a little bit, uh, when it oh, was sure. launched. Yeah, so uh, 
Pop XG was launched in 2016. That's our brand of semi-permanent hair color. Semi-permanent hair color is often bright and vivid, and the color on the hair is typically the same color that you see coming out of the tube. There's no reaction necessary. You don't need to add developer to it. Um, there's no other processing than just putting it on the hair and uh, letting it uh, soak into the strands. Um, it comes in several uh, fun, bright shades, and we're always adding more for whatever look your client can create. You can use them alone. You can use them intermixed and uh, make some really fun shades using color theory. Is it all demi? Is there also direct? So uh, the Pop XG is a direct color um, as semi-permanent. It uh, lasts, lasts um, how many washes do we say last? It's dependent upon the hair type and how porous it is. Um, often people who want it to last a long time, it doesn't last long <laughs> enough. And for people who uh, don't want it to last, it seems to stay in forever. <laughs> Uh, the flash finish is also a semi-permanent uh, toner. It um, really is just uh, light sticking directly to the hair. It does require some developer to uh, penetrate and react on the hair. Um, the Demi, which he's not using but he has talked about, is our Demi permanent color line that lasts four to six weeks depending on what you used and what the condition and hair type is. That is intermixed with the processing liquid. It's about a seven volume developer liquid and you can apply it uh, with a brush. You can apply it um, with a bottle. So it's pretty uh, easy to use, intermixable, creates some really great tones. You can dilute it with clear to use it as a toner if you don't have a product like flash finish in your portfolio. Great, what's the mixing ratio? You may be It's said. one to one. Okay. Colin, do you ever use something other than one to one on the Demi? No, nope, nope. typically it's one to one. Um, we do dilute with the clear again. I love having that as an option, especially if you want to keep it lighter. And the best part about the Demi, um, if for you guys, especially if you have those clients that don't want warmth in their hair, don't want to see warmth, we have a beautiful MT series that neutralizes warmth, a PA series that neutralizes warmth. You kind of can customize it again with the clear so you can keep it really soft by adding clear. You can get that intensity that takes out. Like we put a PA over top of this, an 8 PA, and it's going to be a stunning, smoky, natural kind of a blonde right out of the gate, which is gorgeous. So you have those options with the Demi. So it's a really great product to work with. Gel light consistency, easy to get onto the hair which makes a huge difference anywhere that you can save a little bit of uh, time is huge for us um, I'm very hands-in our leader Angus Mitchell I worked with Angus forever and Angus was very nice when he called me an organic colorist which is I think a really <laughs> nice way to say like I just put everything in with my hands <laughs> but it's the truth I mean I love to use my hands sometimes if nobody's looking I'll just take my finger and you know and just kind of work out that way but, you know, I do think you need to have a relationship with the hair as you're working on it. You know, you kind of have to have that relationship with it. You want to have that feel. And again, a lot of times we don't use our hands enough. You know, you take that brush and you think you're saturated. Oh, that's great, you know. But when I take my finger and run it over, I know I'm saturated. Um, having a plan is great. But being, having a relationship, in my opinion, with the hair is even better. It's easy. And, it, and I say this with, you know, I don't know. I say this with much respect for our industry believe me you know there's 10 year old kids doing hair on youtube now you know like it's kind of an amazing thing and some of them are pretty darn good you know what i mean and they're sitting here like all you got to do is put this on and do this and if you watch those kids some of them are like wow and that's how i started you know and what i love about it again is that people are really excited about hair and they're excited about color and they're trying things and they're doing things that they never did before but for me as an artist like it scares me and excites me at the same time because I got to be better than the amateur, you know, and I have to add value to what I'm doing. So, you know, I think anybody can really kind of bleach hair and make it bright. But I think when you're starting to look at it differently, when you have that client that just wants to be blonde, but when you add a little something to it that makes them unique, that makes them different, but they still feel like they can hold down their professional job or they can kind of, uh, you know, still drop their kids off at school and not be the purpled haired mom, you know, like mm -hmm. that to me makes a really, a really, that's the difference between an amateur and a professional. So, you know, I think our industry has this responsibility now that we really kind of got to be adding more value to ourselves as professionals and not be doing what a lot of other people are doing and step outside of the box and, and, uh, you know, help, help people express themselves through their hair without their hair identifying them. I think that's, 
just something that, you know, I like to do as a colorist. It's important to me. So we're finishing up and we're going to kind of continue that on. All right. All right. So, so yeah, we'll you... continue this and we'll post the picture. Okay. For you guys. Great. So, so thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We've been with at Colin Caruso, C-O-L-I-N-C-A-R-U-S-O. People have been asking for your Instagram handle. Oh, um, and you'll see the final looks later. Thank you again, Can we everybody. give them Valerie's too? Because if you guys have cosmetic uh, questions, questions about pro uh, products, Valerie's a great resource too if great. you really have scientific hair questions. Terrific. Valerie, what's your handle? Cosmetic underscore chemist. And my name just appears as cosmetic chemist. Cosmetic chemist. That's yeah. wonderful. Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. And... Uh, We'll see you later. We'll see you on the cover of July Modern Salon. Thank you. Thank you.